Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, uh, back with something uh, very exciting this time. Uh, well, it is for me. I've uh, never had the chance to look at one of these in the past. It's the Wonder Mega. Now, this one was manufactured by Victor, as you can see here, and it's actually a Model 2. The original one uh, had a motorised tray here, I think. The other difference between the Model 1 and the Model 2 is you've got infrared remotes. Uh, facility on the front here, you know, so instead of using a wired controller, you can use uh, a wireless one. I'll show you that uh, a bit later on, we'll perhaps test that. And in case you're not aware, it's actually a Mega Drive, you can see we've got a Mega Drive slot here, cart slot, and it's a Mega CD combined, but also it's uh, karaoke as well. So on the front here, you can see we've got a power switch, the reset switch, and if we just have a look around the side here, uh, this I think is where the karaoke stuff goes. So you've got mic, echo, earphones, earphone socket, so I think uh, you'd plug two mics in there. And if we have a look around the back, you can see we've got the uh, composite uh, left right audio here, uh, S-video. That was something that got dropped on the uh, US model uh, later, I think, I'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, and the control ports, the wired ones, are on the back. That's really, really annoying in my mind, but then again, they put the infrared thing on the front there, so I guess they were you know, assuming you would be using infrared controllers. Power socket here, it does show the polarity there, I think it's out to negative looking at that, center positive. And then you've got an AV multi out here, which uh, it's not the same actually as the one on the uh, Sega Mega Drive. I don't think there's a little more pins there. You've got four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight pin uh, din, mini din there. That's a bit weird. I don't think a normal Model 2 cable will fit that. And that's it, really. You can see where the warranty seal would have originally been there. Japanese print there, because obviously this was uh, manufactured in Japan, it was a Japanese system. This system was also released in America. It um, was manufactured by JVC and it was called the X apostrophe I, uh, as in, you know, I, your eyeball, E, Y, E. But the X I didn't have the uh, infrared uh, port here, it just used normal wired controller ports. And as I said a minute or two back, they dropped the S video connector, which is a little bit strange actually. You know, you look at the actual costs of that, it's, it's not massively more. And this was a relatively expensive system back then. So yeah, it looks like it's been recapped, but it was a bit of a rush, uh, rush job. You know, there's a little bit of corrosion still there that hasn't been tracked and stuff. Uh, and the main issue is the audio, see the audio was not working very well. I think uh, she was saying she could increase the volume level on the, you know, the TV output or the amplifier, and you could just about hear the CD audio over the you know the normal audio output there from the the mega drive and you know the psg and wherever else it comes from on the board but the cd audio was uh, in a very 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 low level as if there was some sort of problem now it's theorizing perhaps there's a missing voltage to uh, the op amps that come out of the uh, audio section there you know there's a, an audio dac the fact that she could hear audio you, you would assume that the dac is probably okay and it's probably the op amp stage after that or where the signals go from there on you know, into another amplifier perhaps. Um, so I did have a quick look at the schematics, but I'm not sure I was looking at the right ones now. I was looking for the JVC, the JVC model, although it's gonna be very similar, if not identical to this. You know, there's just a few differences here. The, the main logic and the layout of the board and stuff, well, not really the layout of the board, but the chips that are on there are gonna be identical, I think. So anyway, I'll just show you this uh, working as it is now. At this point in time, the CD audio seems fine. So I've spoken to uh, the lady that sent this and she said uh, just maybe try uh, testing it, warm it up for a bit. It's frustrating when you get a problem like this. I'd prefer it if the audio wasn't working because then I can start scoping things and very quickly work out where the actual issue is. Um, now the pictures of the board, as you've seen, yeah, you can see some corrosion on there uh, and I'm sure we'll you know, get some close-ups as we get inside there and you'll, you, you know, we'll hopefully see some uh, proper uh, issues to deal with. But it's not as bad as uh, many systems I've seen in the past. You know, the corrosion's pretty moderate. It's very, very, it's not even moderate. It's class it's very weak, uh, you know, light, uh, very light corrosion. Uh, but there may be some areas of bad corrosion there. I'm not sure. We'll have to have a, a really good thorough look around the board. So I'll switch it on. I've got a uh, CD in the drive here. So straight away you can see you get a, you know, a different uh, BIOS screen there. That's, you know, completely different to any of the other mega, CD uh, or Sega CD systems. 
let's choose gain. So bear in mind we're using composite here, so it's, it's pretty blurry. I've got uh, the S-Video cable to she kind of provided, so I can always connect it up via S-Video later. Yeah, that's looking pretty blurry. Let me just skip, see if we can get to an audio, see the audio track. I'm paying close attention to here to how long it's taking to load and watching the LED for the access light there. Just trying to gauge whether there might be anything wrong with the, the laser, but I don't think so. I think the loads are fine on this. It is literally just an audio problem. But as you can hear there, see the audio is fine. So at this point in time, it's, it's going to be a bit frustrating because uh, I don't actually have a fault. <laughs> it's, it's come all this way to me and uh, it's working. But uh, anyway, it doesn't, that's not going to stop us cleaning up the board and stuff and inspecting around and reflowing anything that needs reflowing. Sweet. That music sounds very James Bondish. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm not sure what game this is. It kind of looks like mush or something like that, doesn't it? I don't know. Start it. Yeah, look, it's like a flying robot. I tell you what, when the composite is blurry like that, it makes it quite hard to uh, see it properly. I'm struggling, especially with the speed that's moving on. Yeah, I swapped over to S Video. That there's an issue with that. I'm not sure if she's used S Video, but that's a fault. So we've certainly got one fault to deal with there. You can see these colours just look terrible. In fact, there is no colour. The colour signal's messed up totally. Wow, that is awful. Absolutely awful. That looks worse than Composite. How, <laughs> how is that possible? Yeah, I'm just checking it's connected properly. It is. Because you've only got like chroma and luma signals there, so it's not like there's going to be a pin not connected, but that, that is terrible. That is shockingly bad, the video on that. Let's start the game so you can see how bad it looks in game. Look at that. That's awful. Where have the colours gone? And it's not this TV. This TV will display any, anything. They can throw anything out. You know. Yeah, so we've definitely got something to look at there with the S video, for sure. So let's uh, remove the screws. I noticed there's one screw missing, actually. The one up here is uh, not there. So we've got three on the bottom here, three across here, and then uh, one on the front. And then the top just lifts off. There are no cables or anything hindering the removal of the lid. It just uh, it comes straight off there. So let's just uh, turn this around. Yeah, the carriage there reminds me of some of the other units, actually. I can't think where I've seen one walking like that. Um, I was going to say the uh, PC engine. It looks very similar, the chassis there, to that. Could be wrong. Anyway, we'll have a look at that. And obviously we'll clean everything up here. We'll clean the... Uh, I'm just looking at the solder there. Someone's been tinkering with that the solder on that switch, look. One or two of the chips on here I have spares for, actually. I've got one of those, a CXA1372Q. It's quite a common chip on a CD uh, drive uh, chipset. I forgot what it is, is it um, an RF um, uh, amp or something like that? It might not be, but I've definitely got one of those. Uh, and I might have uh, one or two of the other chips off here. But I'll, anyway, I'll be wearing my ESD wrist strap because I don't want to take any risks with this. Yeah, if you look at this in the light, can you see how look it looks dirty, the board? It's, uh, it's just going to need a really good thorough clean up here with some vinegar, some IPA, and then uh, really close inspection of the capacitors. Uh, Resolder the odd dirt solder point and uh, I don't know fix any corrosion that we uh, find on the way I guess so I've got the uh, ESD wrist strap on here let's uh, just pull this board up it looks like it's it's a clipped on you know uh, connector there it looks like it's uh, just pressure fed look so I need to be careful because these buttons I mean I could literally just pull these off probably let's just uh, move that out of the way there's a ground wire holding that down there look Ouch, the number of SMD caps on there, good grief. That seems to be just a karaoke sort of things looking at that. 
so it's not like a connection, a bad connection on here is why we're getting a problem with CD audio I think this is uh, predominantly the uh, karaoke board but if we just, uh, just move that out of the way, just put that there for a second yeah, so having a close inspection of the board around here, it's looking very good actually. I see very little issues around the main uh, logic here. There's still bits of electrolyte stuff up here, but you know what? This side of the board is looking pretty good as well. There's a lot of uh, leakage just around there, but it's the, you know the sides of the chips and things are looking fine here, absolutely fine. So let's just continue around and disconnect various things. This uh, flat flex here, it looks like you just need to gently lift it up on each side of the connector there and then the ribbon will come out yeah that could do with a clean you can see that it's just looking a bit oxidized there it might be that some electrolyte from around here has got to that because can you see the board there it looks dirty um, this connector here let's uh, just try and carefully pull this out I'm still wearing the wrist strap here so that's uh, the two connections for the drive disconnected we've got uh, one at the back here uh, a little JST let's just try there you go pull that out so we need to remove the screws here that just uh, support the motherboard in. Pay close attention to the colour and the size, you know, because they're going to vary around this thing. You wouldn't want to put the wrong screws into the wrong positions. Should I be recapping this? It's going to be a lot of work, but the issue with the S video is leading me to think the caps in here, even though they've been replaced, we don't know when they were replaced and the quality of them. Um, because if you remember back, cast your mind back to the, the Mainmeister video I did, I, I, I looked at Alan's PC Engine Duo and that was kind of similar looking to this board in terms of the, the level of corrosion it was just like electrolyte left on there, bits of corrosion not dealt with and all the caps had been replaced, on that instance they were all uh, through a hole once they've been fitted which is uh, you know not the best thing to fit there anyway but you would think, had it been, you know, because it had been recapped, it wouldn't need recapping again. But the caps on there were terrible. There were so many issues with Allen's audio was cutting in and out, and that wasn't to do with the corrosion. It was the quality of the caps that were on there. Maybe they'd started to die already, you know. Anyway, I'll just continue uh, going around this, uh, see if there's any more screws. I don't think there are. I think we we may be in a position where the board might start to lift out. Oh, there's one down here. Yeah, there's one here. Look. So the nice thing with this, just looking at the chips that are on there, um, I don't see anything that makes it really bespoke, you know, there's no sort of bespoke ASICs or anything on here. And there probably will be one or two, but like when you look at, uh, you know, the chips, the, the chips that you will find on some of the other Sega systems, uh, like that one there, for example, um, darn sure, you can probably find that. Uh, yeah, it's an FC1004. You can find one of those. In fact, that's not really the part number. That's like the, the batch number or something. But that 315-5, uh, can't even read it now. I'm pretty sure some of the chips on here you'll find on other Sega CD systems and stuff, on other Sega uh, Mega Drive boards. You know, the RAM. We've got some standard uh, RAM down there. One of these is like a PS RAM, isn't it? Uh, one of them is a bit unusual. It's like it's got some sort of dual bank or something, it might be that one, I don't know, there's quite a lot of different types of RAM on here because this obviously, you know, RAM for the Mega Drive side, RAM for the Mega CD side, uh, RAM for the, you know, well, they say the Mega CD side, they split there, there's different types of RAM, there's like RAM for the CD cache, RAM for CD audio and RAM for other stuff, um, you know, there's the PCM side of things, isn't there? and uh, RAM for the uh, CPU on the Mega CD side because you've got two 68000s effectively you've got one here, that's a straight 68012 68, and one up here which is a 68008 that's going to be the Mega Drive one that one's the Mega CD one the solder iron's heated up uh, all the while here I'm wearing the wrist strap, we're on the ESD mat here and uh, we'll just uh, heat this ground point here let me just clean the tip and um, we'll just heat this uh, ground point here just remove this ground strap there we go. So I'm going to deal with this board last because I honestly believe that that is just a karaoke module. I'm sure it is. Uh, and there's also MIDI out. This provides MIDI out. That's uh, something uh, interesting. Uh, I want to say MIDI out. I'm not sure there's a, a connector for that. Unless it's the proprietary AV connector on the back there that provides the MIDI out, but uh, I do remember reading that these provided MIDI out. The MIDI probably is generated on board and overlays um, the uh, main audio output, I'm not sure, I'm honestly not sure. Lots of guesswork at this stage. So the board should now carefully 
lift up and out because there are no screws holding it and we just need to just pull it away from the back as we lift it up just making sure that nothing is catching anywhere there we go so let's just flip it over and have a look on the underside so other than odd bits like that there the majority of the underside of this it looks pristine I mean it's got a yucky sort of glossy look to it but you know what I wouldn't clean that off that is a conformal coating yeah it's looking uh, it's very good but you see here just the odd spot the odd spot where some stuff's leaked through that's the BTL driver there for the CD unit uh, got a JVC chip here it could be a, a DAC or something there are a number of op amps and uh, things like that on here but there is a DAC in fact the DAC might be on the other side I'm sure I saw what I thought was the DAC before these here little op amps look so when we talk about the problem with the audio you see the audio this is primarily where you want to be looking around the CD section here it's going to be coming out of uh, one of these chips here and through the DAC is this the DAC? I don't know that's a Sony Sony part number there yeah I thought that this had uh, a DAC that I'm familiar with I just don't blooming in well see it at the moment Anyway, I'll continue uh, looking around this. I'll find the DAC in a minute. I just need to have, have a look under magnification, I think. But yeah, this is the area I think we're focused on here with the CD audio problem. We, and look, this is horrendous. The, the, you know, the electrolyte that's still on here, look, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Um, I'll get you a close-up on macro in a minute of the areas that I'm going to start to focus on and I'll show you kind of like before, as I'm cleaning up, and then afterwards, and uh, we can just have a look at them. So we're on Super Macro, it's going to be a bit of a bumpy ride while I uh, move this around but we'll just have an inspection around so you can see uh, points on every single one of these caps need cleaning up we've got some components there that are going to need uh, cleaning up I think lots of leakage here, look, it's just not being treated it's not being treated, that's what, what the issue is with this I think and it's no surprise, I mean look at the debris between those two caps there can you see that? This is why, and this, we're banging the middle of the audio stuff here, you know, well, not just the audio stuff, the CD section here, but some of the stuff around here, some of these uh, smaller caps and things, are uh, to do with the uh, CD audio. Again, look, I think I would get certainly get flux onto each one of these cap points, reflow them, and uh, but I'll do that after I've cleaned up. I'm going to clean up all this uh, debris off the board first and the corrosion. Uh, and you can treat uh, this kind of corrosion with... Uh, some vinegar, white vinegar. So we'll get some white vinegar. Look at all that down the middle there. There's loads of it. Won't be able to see if there's any damage until we've uh, finished cleaning up, really. I'd like to try and get it uh, nice and clean first. So, you know, vias and things around these um, caps could be affected. I'm still puzzled why the S video looks awful. Uh, I need to find where the uh, encoder chip is. If we look around uh, the main ASICs and things here, yeah, with, once it's been cleaned with a bit of vinegar and a light dust with a fiberglass uh, pen, I think we'll be okay. You know, it's, it's not caused any major damage here that can't be easily fixed, I don't think. Um, so at the back of the board here, there's the uh, S-Video connector. Is that some sort of encoder? I don't know. I'll have a close look under magnification in a minute. Yeah, and then up here, things start to look uh, a lot better. You know, the main around the main logic areas, bump over there, so uh, everything is looking pretty sweet, really. There's still, you know, electrolyte needs cleaning up, but yeah, it, it's not too bad on that side of the board at all. Uh, and as I say, it's the same on the underside. It looks pretty good. Yeah, but there is corrosion to be uh, dealt with. That's the super cap there. Yeah, but this is uh, where I'm going to start, I think, this uh, side of the board here. Because this is the audio section. So uh, this is going to be where our fault is. So I've got my cap of uh, white vinegar here. Uh, and I'm literally just going to start toothbrushing this and just leave it for a few minutes as we work our way around here. Sometimes you'll see a reaction with white vinegar. You know, it might fizz up a little bit, but that's more common with... Uh, battery electrolyte rather than capacitor electrolyte it's not quite um, the same in terms of its acidity although uh, in fact it's alkaline isn't it that's the thing we're treating it with acid here yeah sorry almost made a mistake there we use uh, white vinegar because it's uh, a mild acid and the uh, electrolyte is an alkaline
You can tell from the colour of the cotton bud, there's very little. There's very little. It's it's not going to need long this. I'm not even going to leave this 10 minutes, I don't think, based on uh, what I'm seeing. So then we'll just uh, start to mop some of this up, you know, collect the majority of it before we start trying to uh, brush it away or wash it away with some IPA. So what we'll do here is uh, just put some paper towel there, ready. Let's just uh, clean our uh, brush. Yeah, to start with, we'll just uh, use the cap of IPA here to do the same sort of thing. Just have a bit of a scrub around with the uh, IPA. Tilt the board, you can see it's starting to run down here, look. But we'll just use more and more IPA here as part of this and uh, eventually run a few caps of it down the board as we brush it. But you can see, you know, you can see it coming out the bottom here, look. Yeah, some of that colour there is probably conformal coating from the other side. So, I'm not too worried about that. It could be a bit from the edge here. Can you see that? There's a bit on the edge there that was that's come off, look. Either flux or conformal coating. That's all it is. Anyway, I'll do up here and then uh, show you in a minute. And then onto the uh, spot cleaning here with uh, cotton bud and again a bit of IPA. Because you'll get streaks and smears and stuff all over there from where you've been uh, brushing it as I had done. So I made uh, significant progress but there is just so much work involved. Uh, now, it was, I think it was Dennis was uh, kind of warning me I could be spending an awful lot of time on this. Uh, now, I'm not sure if he was trying to do uh, Argon, uh, you know, uh, Simon Locke a favour because uh, this is the sort of thing that Simon Locke is very good at. Um, I'll post a link down to his website below. You know, I get asked a lot actually about repairs. Can you repair this? Can you repair that, you know, Chris? And I'm like, well, be honest, certain things always ask me because if I haven't got much on, yeah, I might be able to do it, but more often than not, I've uh, got way too much on. Um, so it's always nice to know where I can recommend, and Simon Locke is one of those people, one of the very few people out there. I know he does an exceptional job. So, yeah, anyway, I'll post some links down to uh, his uh, website uh, below and his uh, Twitter. If you do want something like this fixing, obviously uh, ask me. If it's uh, certainly something I've not shown on my channel, I'm more than likely to be interested to look at it for you. But if it's uh, an exact same model as this, probably not. <laughs> because it's the sort of thing, you know, I'll show once on my channel. I might show again if I ever get one myself, but they're quite pricey. You know, these will set you back about £400-ish, maybe £500. Anyway, you can see, uh, I'll put your macro in a minute, it's gone up a lot cleaner. Can you see how shiny everything is around here? I've just gone over these very, very lightly with a fiberglass pen. I've cleaned off any uh, dirt and corrosion. Uh, but as you'll see on macro, you get contamination. You can see it here without macro. Can you see this? Look how awful that looks. Uh, now, that's probably some of the original flux, some of the electrolyte, and some of the conformal coating. Um, you can see up here it's still very dirty. I haven't done that part at all uh, but what we have done here is just focus uh, carefully around some of these components here and there's a lot more cleaning still required and I've been at this for about an hour already um, but watch what happens when it leaks over to the other side look at this as it's leaked through some of the wires it's all white and oh, it's disgusting so yeah the underside wherever you clean the top side is going to need a thorough clean afterwards as well uh, and again it's a combination of electrolyte flux vinegar uh, ipa and uh, the uh, conformal coating you know so yeah some uh, a lot of cleanup work is going to be needed under there now despite that looking pristine before we start you can't avoid it because the ipa is going to you know and, and vinegar will run over the edges and round but also through each of the wires so uh, anyway let me just put you on macro i'll show you this side of this chip here is super clean. Uh, it was a case of using the IP, IPA and toothbrush again for a good 30 seconds to a minute in order to get the contaminants out so it doesn't look like that. I've seen this before on Neo Geo boards. Yeah, so if you look at the gaps between the pins on the bottom edge, it's 
absolutely spotless that now but look at this one here uh, I'm not sure how well it's going to come out there's still contaminants look look at the top side there you can see that white milky substance and on the right hand side look uh, and look at this one here so yeah these I'll have to go over now with uh, toothbrush and IPA again in order to clean out all that contaminant and you can see it's uh, much better up there because that's hardly had any work at all look at it it's awful it's like a white milky substance uh, I want to say calcium but it's, it's probably not it's the flux it's probably some like borax or something mixed in with it um, uh, and the other interesting thing I'll just point out as well, these three caps here, these are going to come off. I'm going to take these off and redo them. Look at the, the one on the right there. Can you see it's, uh, it's pin? It's barely making a connection. It's got solder on the side of the cam. And that middle one has as well. Um, that one over there is not too bad, but you know what? I think that this is the issue. Uh, and again, there's some of that white, milky stuff around that one, I think. That little op-amp there. Uh, but you can see it's starting to look a lot better now. Uh, there's obviously still little bits around here that need uh, cleaning. Uh, it's going to be pretty hard to uh, measure this. I was going to just hold hold it on there effectively. Wow, seven ohms. Yeah, this needs a recap. You see that? 7.2 ohms so either that's one of the original caps or it needs a recap I'm gonna suggest that we order a cap kit for this actually so just doing a quick bit of testing let me show you what I've discovered can you hear there's no CD audio music just watch hang on let's come back to the tile screen and it's only coming through one channel, which is something that I didn't really notice at the start. Where right, shall I go? So I'm not sure if it's a pressure on the connector from the karaoke board, because if that's not connected, you don't get sound. So it could well be that, but it could also be that we're press, putting pressure here, which is altering slightly the uh, mechanism inside in relation to... Uh, well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be affecting the actual height of the CD because that's slight on the spindle inside isn't it so I spent the odd hour or two over the last few days scoping things here trying to reverse uh, certain parts of the uh, system here uh, well the audio system trying to work out what is going where where is the signal going missing because what I did do as well which I haven't shown you I tested uh, with uh, the carts the two carts this one won't work I think it probably just needs the edge connector cleaning up it shows the Sega copyright screen and then just does nothing um, so I think it's probably just a dirty uh, connection on the, the car there this one does work but we're getting audio out of only one side audio is not coming out of this connector at all you know if you unplug that one you can hear sound if you unplug that one the sound goes off you plug this one in here you still have no sound you plug it in there you have sound so I started at the back here actually can you see there's like a little uh, it's like a little uh, inductor here it's, uh, it's basically got uh, a, a ground through the center and then the left channel goes through one the left side and the right channel goes through to the right side of that's three pins on each side so you can measure from say the right pin here to the right pin on the other side and you should have a short and we do so that's okay the next thing was to follow the signals from the left and the right hand pins of that three pin device there to the areas here because can you see this is always a clue when you see two identically laid out areas of the board you know it's going to be like left channel right channel um, you know when you in relation to audio certainly um, and, and there's two transistors here so I was like well, what are these transistors doing um, so as you can see I've got a, a really basic diagram here uh, marked some of the little SMD components there and where the individual connections went to where the ground was on the transistors and these left hand pins of those two transistors there join together and come down to a pin here on the you know the little white uh, connector there that goes to the audio PCB so I was uh, theorizing that's probably the mute signal I think because they wouldn't be joined together unless someone had done a, put a short somewhere on this or stuck a wire to the wrong place but anyway that was as far as I got with that I couldn't trace the signal where it goes here where it says via 100 ohm this 100 ohm resistor goes to on each of these out that top pin there 
to the actual um, you know audio connectors so we know the connectivity is all good around there what I couldn't work out is there's a connection from each of these you know the top pins here you know the six single pin on its own on the transistors that's where the audio comes from and I scoped it we had audio on the left channel not on the right so at that point I couldn't work out where the signal was coming from so yesterday I had a look at some uh, other schematics because I can't find schematics for this exact model but there are some wonder mega schematics for the JVC model uh, and I was looking at the pin out of this the 5660 because this is like um, uh, it's got the sound side of things from the mega drive so I was like okay which which pins do the sound come out of and I think you've got three things you've got like a left right and PSG um, the left and right are a different type of audio to the PSG and it's the pins here like you miss you skip two and then it's like the next two on this this corner here um, so I tested from connectivity there and worked out it was coming to this area here this op amp so these two caps here are the output of the op amp here the inputs come from this chip yeah left, left and right go one, one goes into one side one goes into the other and the outputs come through these caps the negative side of these caps then go down this way down here and this is the next op amp so again I trace the signals coming into this op amp and out of this op amp and scoping them I could see the uh, signals no problem there so that left me with a dilemma of okay so the audio is coming from the 5660 here down this way looking like it's going that way merge with some of these it probably isn't it probably comes uh, over here I would think to this but I was questioning how is the audio getting back over to the phonos over there so all the while I've been doing some measurements on there as well trying to work out what goes where so like we've got a ground there uh, that connection there goes to Q802 the left hand side I forget where Q802 is now but I worked out that the connections that go to the phono jacks at the back they come from these two pins at the bottom the white is the left one pin there and the red is the right hand pin so it would appear to me we know we've got audio coming out of the 5660 it's coming down this part of the board here I don't know how it gets back into here I haven't worked that part out yet but what I do know is the left and right audio outputs on those bottom two pins so I've recommended to recap this despite the fact it's got caps on there we're gonna have to remove all the caps on here in order to you know clean up examine examine the connections and traces and things that go to and each uh, from each one of these caps here and, and look for damage because I think we're gonna have some damage on this mixer board here I think that's ultimately gonna be the problem um, that said we've seen the connections coming out of the mixer board there when we're, we're obviously missing a channel but the audio should be going into that mixer board so the next thing I'm going to do is just have a bit of a scope around with the, with the carton again and see if I can see the left and right audio signals on this connector somewhere here because if I can work out where they go in on that connector and update this, uh, this diagram here um, I'll just feel a bit happier knowing that actually the audio signal is getting through to here okay and it's definitely the mixer board because the way things stand I think yeah there are some issues with the mixer board but I think the signal might not be getting to here from you know its, its origin so this hop amp here I forget exactly which uh, pin is the import and which pins the output if I just uh, scope that pin there I'm gonna just give it a sec there's no sound at the moment there we go we've got some sound can you see that meter's going absolutely crazy there can you see that scope you can hear the relay clicking uh, and as I say the signals come out of these caps here so you can see that yeah so looking at one of the caps there you can see we're getting audio out that's one channel then the other channel is that one there again can you see it bouncing around all over the place it's in the demo mode of Sonic at the moment one microphone each so the signals are coupled through there they come down here and as I say into uh, this op amp here now what I did here is when I measured connectivity from the op amp to these little resistors and stuff I put a little red mark on the PCB it's only temporary we can clean it off afterwards can you see that audio signal there coming out of that op amp I think I think that's the input uh, and there's two resistors up here that are marked I think that's either an input or an output I'm not sure but you can see the other channel there and the other one is up here again we've got the audio signal I know it's bouncing but trust me that is the audio signal so I can trace it further if we still get nowhere after recapping this but I'm going to do this next because this is just going to rule a lot of stuff out isn't it if I spend some time now removing and replacing each one of these caps we're going to have a good level of confidence that the issue is not this PCB so I'll just get a little bit of a captain tape here 
around this connector because I'm going to start on this end of the board down here actually. We'll start with these uh, four here I think. Uh, I'll just make sure I know what size those are before I uh, remove them. Just look in between these two pins here, can you see this? It's like a leg of an old cap, can you see that? Yeah, when someone's on the recap, one of the legs has fallen there and wedged itself in between. You can see it better there, in between those two pads. Um, and this is, I think, one of the mics, the mics or something, because it supports two mics, this or something, doesn't it? So it's shorting the left, uh, one of the channels to ground. So this could explain entirely why we're missing audio on one side. Because, uh, incidentally, without this board connected up here, you won't get uh, audio at all. So let me just uh, put something uh, under the board here. Hot as warmed up. And uh, let's remove this cap. I can smell straight away there some uh, electrolyte actually. We shouldn't be able to smell electrolyte if it's been cleaned properly. That side's molten. There we go. Coming off pretty easy. So we'll do the small one as well. Uh, and we can do two, you know, two. If you do too many, you can lose track of uh, which ones. There you go. Which ones you've done, which ones you haven't. What I will do after I've just done these two is put a dot on top of each of the existing ones so that I don't mistake um, which ones I've done, which ones I haven't. In other videos you'll have seen that I usually mark up the ones that I've replaced. I'm not going to do that because after I've done this board here there's so many in tight proximity I'm going to have to clean it with IPA and all my dots are going to come off and I'm going to have red ink everywhere aren't I? So it makes more sense uh, and I can do it now just to go like this on each of these that are bad that we're going to swap. So a little bit of flux on some braid and uh, let's have a slide along the pads there. Not too long because they will lift certainly if they've uh, had any damage in the past. And then we'll clean with some uh, vinegar and a cotton bud and some IPA and a cotton bud. And then just inspect and maybe do connectivity tests where I need to if it looks like there's any damage there. So I've already wiped these with some uh, vinegar just cleaning off with IPA and do the wider area and then we'll just inspect with magnification the pads are looking good and they're going to really thick traces these ones like uh, on the power rails or something they're probably not one of this one here these smaller ones probably on the audio but they're on really thick traces there i've cleaned around these components here with the fiberglass pen and the bottom edge of this chip some of these pads and the uh, soldered coated wires here um, I need to do obviously further afield around these things as I remove these other caps but that's what you need to do, I've done that cap as well around that with the fiberglass pen everything around there is looking okay we've got the old vial like that but I'm just going to leave as they are in order to ascertain what the difference is afterwards and then I can look at these and go okay let's measure from that side to the other side the problem with this with this board, look at this, it's really weird it's weird how it's been laid out you see all these little pads here that go to the uh, the pins on the connector Count how many there are, there's like eight there or something. Flip it over, what do you see down there? You just see some different laid out PCB. You see a couple of wires here and a big bit in the middle. So it's like it's really weird how this has been laid out. It's like you can look on one side and expect to see something on the other and you don't see it. Which makes me think it's more than two layer actually. That could be a huge problem of some corrosion is damaged one of the wires or something there because you don't know where it goes anyway we'll uh, just continue this way now and get those two caps on so the nice thing with this cap kit is it's got the caps in a little bag here with the, each one with the where they go so you can see C921 uh, and these are the, the right size 47 microfarad and it's marked uh, down here you can see that C921 so we just need to get this around the right way the uh, black band goes towards the white band on the board, just looking at these, yeah that's right, all of those are that way, so it needs to go uh, that way around. I might block this with the solder, just carefully touch the pad, oh we certainly moved it. I think what I'll probably do here is just get a load of solder like that and just, you know what, slide the cap into position. I can't see where the connection is there now. 
if you do this under magnification it's far easier can you see that it's uh, it's pretty straight that so we just need to do the other side uh, let's see if we can get you an angle there yeah so you can hopefully see that so we'll just add some solder as we heat the pad there we go that's not too bad let's just reflow that side I think you missed me filming the other side actually anyway there's going to be an opportunity to show you on there many more caps on here and I'll I'll do the same thing I did before, I'll just solder that one pin, it's bound to be misaligned, there we go, uh, and then under magnification I can just straighten it out, to be fair that's not too far off actually, let me just have a look, yeah that's actually uh, okay, it's, uh, it's not being pushed too far across here, so let's just uh, touch the pin, yeah there's barely any solder on that, and these pads here, you know the traces going to them are really beefy so you do need to leave it long enough there you go I've got a bead there look leave it long enough for the solder to uh, you know heat up and uh, form a bead yeah so hopefully you can see that I know it's blowing a little bit nice little blob on either side there so two down uh, about a million to go I'm going to focus on these tens there are four 10 microfarad 16 volt caps here Because I was using quite high airflow there, I don't know whether you noticed it, I couldn't see it. We uh, blew off a couple of caps. We've got one here and one here, actually the resistors. Uh, it's a bit like what I showed earlier on, where you've got two channels left and right, and you have a set of components on one side, a set of components on the other, exactly the same. So we can do that here. So it's like this is the same as that one, this is the same as that one, this is the same as that component there, which is the one that's nearest to the pads here. So I can just move that up, stick that back there. And then the one down here is the same as the one that looks like it's come out from there. Does that make sense? So it's really easy to put those back. But I'm taking that as a warning to just reduce the airflow a little bit so that I don't blow these things around because you know what, that could have been a catastrophe if all of those had blown off and hadn't been a left, you know, another channel to compare to on there, I'd be like, oh my goodness, what goes where? So it's looking a bit better. I've removed the solder from there with some uh, flux and braid. So I'll scratch these little uh, pads here uh, under magnification to get them back to copper. Just make sure we've got connectivity across there and uh, we'll get some flux around this and reflow that. Uh, clean up and then get the uh, four new caps on there and I'll give you a macro on that before we do it so you can see I reintroduced those two components there that fell off you know got blown away the pads need a lot more work there still but you can see this via here that via is awful and if I flip the board over can you see this giant blob of solder here someone's uh, tried to fill that with solder and failed miserably maybe that's the actual issue there maybe one of the audio channels comes in there and that fires the issue so I'll test that while we're at it but just so you can see these pads look at them they're like black you see that in the middle of those traces they could be corroded all the way through and the same thing up here one or two there so I covered all the little vines there with uh, solder, uh, you know there were some that were exposed and there was the four pads, two there, two there, I'll show you again in a minute. I've reflowed that side of the chip there with uh, some uh, fresh solder and uh, you know I've got flux on there, I'll just do this one. I'm just going to bob into them, hang on if you can see the blooming thing, I can't see what I'm doing from this distance, that is the problem. Because these are affected by the uh, alkaline, the solder looks awful. So we'll just have a, a bit of a clean up here before I fit these caps. So I've taken a side step away from the recapping. Uh, we've half recapped the mixer board here. As far as I'm concerned, other than some bad connections on there, the mixer board is looking all right, to be honest. Uh, although, you know, just one or two things need reflowing on it. So I did some more measuring round, and I think I've worked out uh, where the inputs, the audio inputs, go into this mixer board connector. The third pin down on the left hand side, that's uh, the left input. And the right input is on the opposite side, and it's the fourth pin down. So we can now scope that. Yeah, the issue is that there is no signal coming in. Here, so we can rule out the mixer board, which is why I've kind of stepped away from the mixer board. So if we uh, probe the third pin down, which is the that's the audio channel you can hear, you can see the waveform there. It's on the opposite side, and the fourth pin down on the uh, other side, you can see it's just bobbing around 
at very very low level there's no audio on the other channel you can see it so I know the connectivity is good from here down to capacitors here it's these two caps here um, I'll talk more about that later the exact audio chain but yeah this one is the one that's connected to the channel that works this is the one that's connected to the channel that isn't the caps are okay I think so I need to uh, trace back further on this part of the uh, connectivity here to work out where it's going missing incidentally that LED is going to need replacing if you just move it a little bit it stops working and it isn't the solder points I think it's broken actually and it was like that right from the very start here this is not something I've done it was uh, a little bit glitchy uh, so anyway yeah like this first cap I've just scoped these the, 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 there's nothing on this side of the, this cap here but there, uh, and nothing on that side so it's this one we need to follow the chain off but anyway let's do the other channel first um, so I was thinking is it this off-pump here seemingly not uh, but these components here, which I measure around, look, got short there. So I'm just going to put a little red mark on there. As I say, I'll clean these off. It just wipes off with some IPA. So I know that's uh, one channel there. Let's just do the other one. So it's going to be, again, mirrored circuits here. It's identical, isn't it? This stuff at the top. It's just probably laid out in a different order. And this might be the answer if we don't find a connection here. We'll do the bottom ones as well, just in case it's on the bottom side. But I mean, I'm not finding a join there, look. Yeah, I think we've just found the answer. So, the positive side of this cap here, you know, this is what's coupling the audio to the uh, the, the mixer there. Uh, and it should, you know, be coming through this op-amp probably, through one of these components, out to the positive side of this cap. And I think we've just proven by touching each of these here that we've got nothing yeah there we go that's where the break is so hopefully within a few minutes we might have uh, left and right audio back so here's the pinout you can see out one so that's the output of uh, one of the op amps here and the other one is pin seven so it's dead straightforward now if I just uh, put it on continuity again there we go and if we measure from uh, let me think pin seven up here I can see the component already I think pin 7 yeah there we go so it's, it's between there we need a wire and the cap so let me just uh, confirm that is the case so uh, if we can connect to there nothing there nothing let me just mark that one up because we know now that this is the component where the uh, damage is and the one we previously marked was down here so let's just t test that again hang on if we can yeah, so got a join from there to there and there. Yeah, there's the answer, and that's a bit unfortunate. Just literally touching that with the braid, the pad has just come straight off. It was it was hanging on on this point here, barely. But there's a trace down there that you can't see. Um, you know this pad here if you look at the one that works there's a little thin trace you may be able to see here that connects to the pad and then you've also got a wire on this side we got the wire it was hardly hanging on here it had already been lifted up and just pushed down but it had broken off at the point where the trace joins so that's the issue the question now is how do i fit a cap from here to here and then have a fix to the little trace over there i think i'll start by just scratching off the the trace here so as you can see, I've joined the uh, wire from the, the bottom of that component there, it's a little resistor I think, to the point where it's anchored in the corner there. I'll give you a closer look at that in a minute. It's mounted at an angle between the pad that was existing on the top and the uh, wire, which I scraped to get a good connection there. So that should be it. I think we should have audio now. So the moment of truth, have we got right hand side audio? I'll have to disconnect the phonos, yeah I think we do. If we disconnect the left one, Oh yes, we do have a right channel. I'll plug the left one back in and plug the right one. Yeah, and we've just got left channel, so that's fixed that issue. So I'm going to have a little bit of a test now, I'll get Sonic in there. I'll test the CD out as well, just to make sure we've got to CD audio. Let's see what that sounds like.
it's hard to tell the stereo separation there. I think I'm just going to plug some headphones in and just hear what it sounds like. You can with the rings, let's just do that. Yeah, you can hear the ring. You might not be able to because, I mean, this camera is stereo, but it's, uh, you know, the microphones are right next to each other, so... Yeah, I can hear the separation there. Yeah, tested with headphones, it's absolutely perfect. I can hear the separation very clearly on certain parts of that music, you know, um, and certain uh, sounds like the, the ring noise, it goes like from the left channel to the right channel. So I've got the uh, a CD in the drive here. Oh, hang on, I've got a cartridge in. Let me remove the cartridge. One thing that's important with these uh, systems, a bit like the PC Engine Duo, if you've not got a ground to the CD chassis, it struggles to read. I'm having to literally press the board down here to hold the ground contact down. So this is one of the problems you can have testing them exposed. What, I'll, what I might be able to do is I'll show you this in a minute. Just get a crock clip and uh, connect the ground up loosely that way. It'll certainly assist me while I'm testing so I don't have to keep holding the board down as I'm doing at the moment. Anyway, let's uh, just see what the sound's like here. Are we lacking CD audio? I think we may well be. So there could well be a second issue with this. Let me just try touching some of the caps around here. Ah, there we go. It's a bad connection on the interconnect on the mixer board. That's what that is. And I can show you these things here. The first thing is if you don't hold the board down so that the ground is making a contact with the shield on the underneath, which is connected to the drive chassis, it'll struggle with reads. You can actually hear it. If you listen really closely with sound down, you can hear the heads uh, tracking going... Zzzz, and as soon as you press it, like that, it stops. And suddenly it's able to read, and that starts. But the audio issue towards this... Don't think it's a bad connection. Don't think it's a bad trace. I think it's this interconnect here. We'll get some deoxid in there, toothbrush, and retest it. So I've got a bit of contact cleaner just on the uh, edge of there. Let's uh, see if this improves the CD audio somewhat. It might not do. We might still have a bad connection around here somewhere. It could be one of the caps or the solder points there. But I think we've certainly got to rule it out as a first point of uh, contact thing, really. And yeah, we'll do the same thing there, just get a little bit of that contact cleaner in there. Because, you know, the caps in here, here maybe uh, that's influenced the connectivity a bit, I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, just connect that back up. So cleaning up that connector made a difference, but it uh, didn't solve the issue completely. Uh, a lot of other things needed to be done. And there were also a number of other faults I needed to deal with, uh, things we hadn't even uh, become aware of at this particular point. So I've had to bring the video to an abrupt end. I'm sorry it was run over an hour. There's also quite a lot in the second part. And don't worry, it's not all recap stuff. I'm not showing, I don't think, any more recap stuff. Um, but there are some more faults, and there's another couple of issues. We've certainly got the problem with the S-Video still to deal with. Um, some, a few things there to you know just fix the reliability of the CD audio and the CD reads and things. Um, cleaning up and testing. Uh, but also like, another audio fault as well, related to something else. I do hope you found the video interesting. If you can support the channel, please see the Patreon or Coffee links down below. Just one dollar a month means it can continue to do these uh, videos. And uh, you know, with tough times with COVID at the moment, lots of people losing jobs and things, I've seen quite a, a large drop in uh, you know support from Patreon. So yeah, every dollar makes a huge difference. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for your comments. Catch you in the next video.